After the Second World War, many high-ranking Nazis fled Germany in fear for their lives and that their true crimes would be shown to the world. There were a few Nazis and members of the SS who did face justice for the crimes they committed during the conflict. Trials such as the Nuremberg Trials took place, in which the remaining members of Hitler's inner circle and government were subject to justice. However, there were many more trials that did take place. One man who did face his crimes was Karl Hermann Frank, a prominent Nazi official who oversaw part of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia during the Second World War and before. He was a man who was incredibly brutal and carried out massacres in reprisal for one of the most senior Nazis assassinations, Reinhard Heydrich. Join us today as we look at the justified execution of Karl Hermann Frank, the right-hand man of the butcher, Reinhard Heydrich. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Born in modern-day Czech Republic, Karl Hermann Frank learned the importance of nationalism from his father. During the First World War, he attempted to join the Austro-Hungarian army, but was turned down as he was blind in his right eye, and because of this he instead studied at a law school in Prague. He was a keen supporter of the Nazis, and especially supported their policy on the fact he believed the Sudetenland, a region of Czechoslovakia, should be joined into the German Empire, and with this Frank joined the Nazi party in 1923. He began to set up different regional districts of the Nazi party, and went even further in 1925, setting up a bookshop that distributed Nazi propaganda and literature. He became a leading figure in the Nazi movement in the Sudetenland, organising the Sudeten German Homeland Front, which then became a political party known as the Sudeten German Party. It's clear he devoted his life to the Nazi cause, and in 1935 he became the deputy leader of the Sudetenland German Party, becoming a member of the Czech Parliament. The Sudetenland was absorbed into the German Empire and the Third Reich after the Munich Agreement was signed. Frank was a rather radical Nazi and was made the deputy Gauleiter of the Sudetenland and officially joined the Nazi Party and also the SS on the 1st of November 1938. He then became an SS Gruppenführer in 1939 and was then appointed the Secretary of State for the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia under the Reich Protector at the time who was Konstantin von Neurath. He was also named the leader of the police in the area, and Frank would begin to impose his power onto the people. He oversaw and controlled the Gestapo, the SD, and also the police in the region, and began to stamp out on dissident Czechs, who spoke out against the Nazi regime. This even included trying to force the arrest of the region's Prime Minister, and Frank was a rather harsh figure, who began to become embittered with the Reich Protector of Von Neurath, who was soft compared to Frank. Hitler eventually listened to Frank's concerns and sacked Von Neurath, and began to pursue a harsher and more forceful approach to Bohemia and Moravia after Neurath was sacked on the 23rd of September 1941. To do this, Frank believed he was the right man for the job, and he hoped to be protector himself. However, Hitler decided to make a swift and brutal decision that would change the area forever. Adolf Hitler decided that Reinhard Heydrich was the man to rule over Bohemia and Moravia, and Heydrich would develop a reputation for being a butcher in the area. Heydrich was given the power to enforce all Nazi policies, including race laws within the states, and even could use the army to fight pockets of resistance. One key part for the war effort was that the Czech areas needed to continue to produce materials for the Germans during the Second World War, and it was key that the factories kept turning out cars, weapons and tanks. Frank and Heydrich had many things in common, their brutal ideas on enforcing Nazi policy, and the fact they were strict, ardent Nazis with devotion to Hitler and the Nazi cause. For this they launched a huge attack and a reign of terror onto the area they were entrusted to oversee, and they went on the attack to bring the protectorate into line. They used the Gestapo and the police to attack any political prisoners and racial opponents, and in particular they targeted Jews to be deported straight to concentration camps without any answer. By February 1942, Heydrich and Frank had imposed their brutal will onto the people, and arrested thousands and executed hundreds in sheer acts of deterrence. They wished to do this to force the rest of the population into submission. 
However, the reign of terror in a sense was greatly affected with the assassination of Heydrich. On the 27th of May 1942, he was assassinated in Prague, and without a doubt it was a huge moment in the reign of the Nazis, as one of the most powerful and important figures in the Third Reich, the man who was given overall charge and power within the final solution of the Jewish question, or the Holocaust, was murdered by Czech resistance. After Heydrich's death, Frank once again was refused a top job, and Heydrich's successor along with Frank sought to initiate huge devastating reprisals for the killing of Heydrich. They ordered the massacres of Czech villages of Lazaki and Ladis to take revenge on the Czech people for the death of Heydrich, and Frank personally ordered his soldiers to shoot all of the men in the region, sending all the women to concentration camps and to place the few children considered worthy of Germanization into the care of SS families in Germany, with the rest being murdered. With this he gave permission for the children to be stolen and executed, with the women sent to places such as Auschwitz, and the men were all executed in cold blood. In June 1943, Frank rose to the position of an SS Obergruppenführer, and also took the office of the head of police in Prague. He then rose to become a general in the Waffen SS, and continued to establish himself over the state. He became the most powerful Nazi in Bohemia and Moravia, and would rise once more. As the war was turning against the Germans by 1944, Frank continued to wield power across the state, and he took it upon himself personally to flush out resistance groups in Moravia, attempting to destroy groups of partisans that had gathered to try and oust the Nazis. He ordered large-scale attacks on groups of partisans and resistors, but the German army were unable to destroy many of the groups. Frank continued to exercise terror over the state, ordering summary executions of those men and women suspected of not just being partisans, but even expressing the smallest part of support for them. He believed that he personally defeated the partisans, but this was not the case. As the Nazis' empire crumbled around them, Prague stayed in the control of the Nazis. It was the last city amongst the major European ones to be freed. Karl Hermann Frank was defiant in his stance to defend the city from any attackers, and on the 30th of April 1945, he made a broadcast over the radio. He said that if an uprising should occur, then he would drown anyone involved in the sea of blood, before ordering the streets to be cleared of anyone, and that the army and police should shoot anyone on sight. With this, the streets of Prague became a bloodbath, with many being simply executed for just leaving their homes. Frank knew he was a war criminal, and because of this he tried to flee the Soviets, who were advancing towards the city. He handed himself over to the Americans at Pleasant on the 9th of May 1945. He was then placed on trial in 1946, and was represented by a Czech lawyer, which caused him great embarrassment, and at trial, evidence of the horrific massacres he had ordered were told. For this, he was sentenced to death, after being convicted of the war crimes, and a destruction and devastation of Czech villages and reprisals. On the 22nd of May 1946, in a courtyard outside Pankrat Prison in Prague, a huge crowd gathered to watch the execution of Karl Hermann Frank, the man who had imposed such terror onto the population. Thousands of people packed into the streets to watch the execution of the Nazi, and his execution was captured on tape. The method of execution was a Hungarian pole hanging method, and it was said, those of Lidice's widows who were able to come, and the widows of some 30,000 other Czechs for whose execution Frank had been adjudged indirectly responsible, occupied the second row of seats. Not the slightest gleam of compassion could be seen in that row of unforgiving eyes as Frank, dressed in a ragged Nazi elite guard uniform, walked quietly between the two guards. As the noose was adjudged around his neck, Frank muttered, Germany will live, even if we do not live. With this, he was then hanged from the pole, in front of thousands of spectators who must have felt a sense of justice, with the former horrific leader dying and taking his last breaths. It was said that, the spectators watched quietly in the bright sunshine, as Frank was executed. After his death, an autopsy was carried out, before he was buried in an unmarked grave in Prague. Allegedly, his hangman took the noose from around his body, and then lost it after he drank heavily in a bar one evening. Karl Hermann Frank was a despicable man, who since his youth believed that the German state was much superior to others, and with this followed his beliefs to become 
one of the most dangerous and powerful men across the Nazi state. His crimes and brutality were unmatched, and together with Reinhard Heydrich, they became a pair known for the horrific destruction of the innocents. He was a man who did meet justice at the end of the Second World War, however ultimately it was long after he had inflicted so much suffering and hatred onto so many. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.